Wonderful. All right, so welcome to Afraid of the Dark, How We Know What We Can't See. And what I'd like to remind everyone is, you know, just at the beginning, when astronomy was just getting started and people were looking through the very first telescopes, they had this wonderful tool available to them to help them understand what was going on in the heavens above. They didn't just have a telescope and were able to see the light coming from them, they also learned very quickly what the laws of gravity were. And this is something that helped, that's helped astronomers out throughout history, and it's what I specialize in today. So it's still a really useful thing. And so with that in mind, I'd like to get started. So the way we know the laws of gravity, we figured them out from looking at the solar system. This was how it all got started. You watch the planets move in the sky, and you said, well, what do we notice about them? And Kepler was smart and figured it out, and only about 20 years of working on it, he said, well, they move in ellipses around the sun, and one of the more important things that we learn is when we see a planet or any object moving around the sun, when we see how far away it is, we can figure out how quickly it should be moving. And so we figured that out pretty quickly for Mercury, for Venus, for Earth, for Mars, for Jupiter, and for Saturn. And that, that was pretty good. Life was good for a while. Newton came along and put down the laws of gravity, and we were set. And then in 1781, William Herschel was looking through a telescope, and he discovered one of the newer planets. He's like, wow, that one's not a star either. It's, it's also moving around the sun and exhibiting these weird motions. And so they eventually named this Uranus, and that was back in 1781. And people were watching it. And there was a slight little problem with this. They're watching Uranus, and they know how the planets are supposed to move. And so they say, well, OK, I see it right here, and I know it's this far away, so I can see how fast it should be moving. Well, they started cataloging this from 1781. Every year, where is its position? And what they saw actually didn't match what they expected to see. What they expected to happen was, well, it's going to follow Kepler's laws, which means it's going to take this path at a certain speed. And it took the path at the wrong speed. For about the first 20 years that they're watching this, this planet was moving faster than they expected. And then it appeared to slow down, and it was moving at the right speed. And then it slowed down even further, and it was moving too slow. So people started questioning what was going on. And what people were generally saying is, well, Maybe we don't know Newton's laws very well. Maybe Kepler only knew what he was talking about for the first few planets. Maybe it doesn't apply for anything further out. And so we really didn't know what was going on. It took 65 years for someone to figure out what was going on. And it was a Frenchman named Le Verrier. In 1846, he said, aha, I've got it. Check this out. If I start out over here in 1781, and I watch Uranus start to move through the sky, if I have another heavy planet further out, farther out right here, it's going to pull Uranus towards it. And so that's going to make it accelerate from Newton's law of gravity, and it'll speed up. It'll start to go faster than we think it should. Then for this part over here, where Uranus and Neptune are roughly in a line with the sun, it doesn't really have an effect on the motion of the planet this way. So we won't be able to see a discernible difference, and it should approximately follow Kepler's laws. And then, finally, when this planet starts to move and gets ahead of Neptune, or whatever planet happens to be farther out there, then it should slow down because it gets accelerated backwards towards Neptune. And that was what he did. He didn't have a telescope. He was like me. He was a theorist. He relies on people to take good observations and just kind of makes guesses as to what should be going on. But, but he was pretty good about it. And he said, well, if my calculations are right, then there should be a planet this far out with a certain mass that moves at a certain velocity. And so now that it's 1846, I predict Neptune should be right about here. I predict there should be a planet right there in the sky. And people, when they finally had a powerful enough telescope, they looked and they found it right where he said it was. <coughs> and that is the very first example of what I would call dark matter. That's something that we had no idea what was going on. 
But someone said, well, what if there's an extra mass and the only problem that's keeping us from understanding what's going on is there's some mass out there that we can't see. That is dark matter. And so Neptune was the first example of that, and it turned out that our laws of gravity were fine. So now we come to the present day, and we start looking on bigger scales than just the solar system. Well, gravity will tell us where the mass is, but we know that stars are what give off light. So this is a pretty well-known galaxy. This is NGC 6503. And what you can see looking at the starlight coming from this galaxy is that most of the starlight, most of the light coming from this galaxy comes from the center. That's where the highest concentration of stars are. And so that's what you would expect. That's where you would expect it. most of the mass is. Most of the mass of this galaxy should be in the center. And as you get farther and farther away from the center of the galaxy, what you expect to see is that there's less and less mass. The way you can test this is we still know the same laws of gravity. We, we have general relativity, but on scales of a galaxy, that really doesn't change very much. Newton's laws still work really well. So what we would expect is just like in the solar system, the closer in you are to the sun, the faster the planet moves around. So Mercury is the fastest planet around the sun, and the planets get progressively slower and slower the farther out you move. So Neptune moves the slowest, and as you go in, the planets move faster. So over here, what you would expect is the same thing. The stars closest in towards the center should be moving the most quickly, and the ones farthest out towards the edge should slow down. And I'm going to show you the graph now of what happens when we compare what we expect with what we observe. So what we see is, if we just had a disk full of stars, we would see a big rise in velocity up until we got out of the central bulge. And then we would see a fall off, just like we see a fall off in the solar system. <coughs> but when we look through our telescopes and we take a look at what is this doing, we see that the farther out we go, a kiloparsec is about 3,000 light years. So we're talking about going out here to about 75,000 light years out from the center of this galaxy. And as far out as we can measure, the galaxy doesn't slow down. The stuff that's farther out from the center of the galaxy is rotating just as quickly as the stuff on the inner part of the galaxy. And we don't know why this is happening. Again, people say the same two things they said when they saw that Uranus was moving in a funny fashion. They said, well, either the laws of gravity as we know them are not correct, or there's some matter in there that we don't see. Now, because I've already told you I study dark matter, you probably guess which side I'm on with this argument. But, um, but let's take a look and see why, because I, I'd like you to understand that as well. So, all right. So the problem we find is that, in general, when you measure the amount of light, we know how stars work. So if I measure the light coming from a galaxy, or coming from a star, or coming from a collection of stars, when I measure that, I know how much mass is in those stars. Right? And this works really well for the solar system. We know how our sun works. And we also know that 99.8% of the mass of our solar system is in the sun. So we would expect that when we look out at the rest of the galaxy, it's reasonable to think that, well, the rest of the universe should do the same thing that we do. It'd be very reasonable if most of the mass of galaxies was also in stars. But we have a technique to look for mass independent of stars. And this is called gravitational lensing. And all it's dependent on is how much mass is there. If I have a light source behind a mass, it's going to bend in a certain fashion, and the bending is dependent on one thing only, and that's how much mass is in between it. So if we measure the amount of mass, we can, if we measure light coming from behind, like this, a big cluster of galaxies, we can figure out what the mass is and where the mass is here. And so looking at this big cluster, you say, well, the middle is the brightest, and maybe there's a big concentration over here. And so I would expect that most of the mass would be in the center, and it would fall off as I go farther out. But what we actually see when we reconstruct where the mass is, is we say, well, yes, there is a big concentration.